All right, YouTube, today we're starting a new series called Swing Rounds, where I'm gonna be going and breaking down some key rounds in Search and Destroy that were pivotal in the map uh, at hand. So I'm gonna pick and choose some CDL matches during the weekend to cover, and then I'll upload later on in the week uh, those swing rounds that were really, really pivotal and do a little analytical breakdown for you guys. It'll be really easy to digest, so it's not you know a whole map that you're taking into account. It's just gonna be you know one or two really big rounds that change the course of the entire map. So today we're starting with at Atlanta versus Boston, the Karachi SND. Let's get right into it. All right, so to give you guys a little background, this was game two of the Atlanta versus Boston series. Obviously, we covered the game one already in the VOD session I did previously, but right now, Boston is down 0-1, and they're actually up five to four in this search destroy. They were actually down four to two, but they made three straight round wins to make it 5-4, and then this is a huge round. Obviously, if they win the round, they win the entire map. If not, it goes to a round 11 decider. So to start off with this round, as you can see, Atlanta phase, they're going to be tripling B here, sending one guy towards the A side, that's gonna be Simp. And on the other side, we have Boston, who's gonna be hitting out mid with Slasher, who's gonna be going towards you know, top coop over here. So what's happening here is Capsule is gonna be challenging this mid cut with a sub. They coordinate with some tacks over here. They're trying to stun a BZ here, making sure that he doesn't have the time to challenge the mid cut. Capsule has the jump on him. But what do you know, once the stun comes in, a BZ is looking for it. He gets this really big first pick. And I wanna emphasize how big this kill is over here. Bomb is down in the mid middle here towards this B street. Obviously it's not in the B cut. So someone would have to pick it up later on the round. They have to go into this open area uh, to get it and then retrieve it and then plant it at one of the sites. So uh, this is a really big kill. Obviously it's a first blood, but once again, once bomb is down, that kind of changes the course of the entire round because of where the enemy might be playing, knowing that, you know, if they know capsule is the bomb carrier, they could play off of that and where you guys have to play. Because if you're not expecting your bomb carrier to die in that situation, you kind of have to adjust where you're playing and it really kind of creates some chaos in a round uh, because you have to adjust to that. But this is a good play by Snoopy here because while that's happening, he's climbing up this top AC ladder because what he wants to do is he wants to get into this top fountain area. Because they're going towards this B site, him being in that top fountain area creates a really interesting dynamic for the offense because now they have this map positioning towards this fountain area, which is kind of like a flex position between the A and B site because now any rotators like Sim could go through fountain. So if you know Snoopy has this positioning already, he's covering that off. So the rest of his team basically just has to cover uh, the street and mid and they can basically cut off all reinforcements towards this b site but once again boston doesn't have bomb because capsule died so it's a really awkward position because snoopy's up here but he can't really do anything in terms of creating some you know map pressure for boston uh and trying to like back off atlanta phase because all he's really doing here is trying to catch someone off guard but if they don't give him anything to work with you know that's just going to run out the clock a lot and they probably know that bomb is down with capsule so you know atlanta phase all they have to do is basically watch this street you know you're going to see draza go on top of this barrel heady over here and he just has a direct line of sight on the bomb so you know Snoopy here he's trying to make some sort of play but Atlanta phase does a really good job of not actually giving anything to him so since Snoopy does jump over to this top fountain area as you see here Selium obviously is not expecting uh, him to be top fountain already you know that's a pretty risky jump and especially if you know Selium thinks that number one has over him and has that line of sight towards that top balcony he's not expecting uh, Snoopy to be his top fountain here so number four Selium is kind of looking towards this mid cut making sure that anyone who could have you know just ran down mid cut towards the fountain area like this he's covering that lane but he doesn't expect snoopy to be behind him uh, at the top floor so that gives snoopy an easy kill towards the p4 air right here and also slasher gets another kill on a bz here he gets capsule's trade so that's a big thing to note so i'll rewind it back real quick but as you saw here capsule dies to a bz here but he can call out that a bz is going towards this corner so he gives that information to slasher and slasher is just going to play this as if a bz is just still in this corner because he just wants to clear this to see if he can get that trade. So he's just hoping that a BZ hasn't, you know, doubled back, went back towards cash. So even though Capsule died, he's able to give this information to Slasher. Slasher's able to get that free kill. And now it's a pretty decent situation for Boston. 3v2 situation, Atlanta is split. If you're playing percentages, you're probably thinking that at least one more is towards uh, this B side and one is probably playing towards that A side because obviously you didn't have anyone towards that A side to clear it. So uh, you get those two kills, one in Fountain and one in that corner, and you're 
you're just expecting at least one lurking towards the A side because obviously you went B and not A, so you're just expecting percentage-wise that they're gonna have some type of person covering that A site in case you went there. But like I talked about before, the bomb is down in an awkward position. So Snoopy is at the top fountain here. He's climbed back up the stairs. He's looking towards the back. They're trying to get some type of information on where one of these other players are at. But you know, eventually they're going to have to make a move for this bomb. So Slasher over here, he's gonna pick up the pinch. He doesn't know if this A side player is full deep pinching. They don't know if he's going mid side, whatever. You know, Snoopy is trying to pick up uh, this bottom door in case, you know, number three was rotating towards that way. The only real uh, opportunity for Sim to make a play here is, is to go through mid and, you know, climb top ladder. And that's basically what he does. You know, he actually finds this gap, goes up the top ladder, can go up the top AC. These guys are, you know, looking for some type of rotator, but they're just not getting any sort of information. Uh, so they're assuming that he's either probably gone deep or probably gone through mid in some sort of way. You know, number six, Priesta is kind of looking towards this mid cut in case uh, he was going that way. So, you know, Simp literally found the only opportunity for him to get towards this uh, B side without him being seen. And he's in a really good position over here. He can stop uh, the B push in case those guys go over there and they know the bomb hasn't been picked up already. And, you know, he's kind of trying to find this gunfight towards this mid area because he knows that Snoopy killed uh, Cell in this P4 area. So it's possible that he could have, you know, went through this front door and repinched this way. So that's what Simp is looking for in this specific situation. So they actually kind of back off towards the site because they expect uh, Boston numbers to be there. And what happens here is that Boston is actually going to smoke out their B side and look for someone towards the statue and bridge over here. So maybe they got a call out or something that someone could have been towards this tower position over here because they're really hard clearing it. They've even smoked themselves off from the mid cut and top AC to make sure that they can try and, you know, focus on this gunfight had someone been there. But unfortunately, just no one's there. And if we wind back to the start of the round, I feel like with this confirmation that Caps is able to get, he's able to get there so quick with lightweight here that he would have seen someone towards this tower side with this timing. And then Slasher is able to go top coop. So he would have seen anyone, you know, during this timing too. So maybe it was just a miscom or something, or they just didn't know uh, where this last player towards this B side was uh, because Draza here, he's at this barrel heady. So, you know, they were just really trying to hard clear uh, this top tower area, even though, you know, no one was there. Because look at what they do. They go under the bridge. They're trying to flank this steps area and they're trying to clear the tower area. They, I guess they just assume that someone uh, was towards this side. So they're trying to check their bases, but you know, look at also all the bad timings that Snoopy gets. This is just so unfortunate. He's top Balk over here. Simp is top AC. He doesn't turn and see him. You know, even Simp over here, he's gonna see Snoopy right here. As you can see, he preempts it. So I don't know if Snoopy saw Simp. I doubt it in this situation. It doesn't look like he did see him. Um, and then he goes back towards this window. I don't know if he saw him there either, but you know, there's just really bad timings for Snoopy here and really unfortunate and that's kind of what creates a really chaotic round for Boston here because they just can't find any of these players for phase and now the clock is just running out for them they have 30 seconds to actually get this bomb down and you know they don't really have the positioning for it you know maybe you could say uh, early on in the round they should have just had Snoopy you know jump out get this bomb you know have Slasher with top coop maybe go top AC watch over him make sure that he's you know covered for anyone who might have been deep street like Draza was have him pick up the bomb you know maybe escape towards P1, escape towards mid cut, but kind of just like do something active together. Honestly, it just feels like they're trying to find these phase players, but a phase is not giving them any information and you know, you're getting these bad timings, which obviously is unfortunate, but you know, you're on offense. You're the ones that have to start making the play once the time is running out. And as you see here, they try and do something. Slasher is going to go towards this B bomb because he has to motion towards picking up this bomb. Uh, unfortunately though, Draza is top castle here. He's able to get that first kill on the Slasher and then he's going to back up. Snoopy's going to try and look for him. He's top castle here. Snoopy's actually going to get this kill, uh, but unfortunately on the other side, Priesta is going to lose the one-on-one -on -one gunfight to Simp, and then Simp can just play kind of time over here. He's expecting Snoopy to chow him right away as he goes to this P1 and tries to hide from himself because he is tagged a little bit. As you see, 80 health, so Snoopy is going to be challenging this uh, as he should, but unfortunately he just can't find him, and Simp is able to win the gunfight, and they are able to tie it up five to five. So huge round for FaZe to come back in this specific match. Map. You know, a really unfortunate one for Boston. They have the 3v2, but Bomb is down in just a really awkward position for them, and they can't really make anything out of it. Time is starting to run down. They start trying to make some plays. Unfortunately, though, FaZe is able to clutch that 2v3 and force a round 11. So we'll go to the round 11 here, FaZe on offense. They kind of do a defaulty, you know, one AR watching top plat over towards mid. Number two is going to be a sub, quick sub like a BZ. He's going to be chowing mid cut, similar to how Capsule was doing, and FaZe is going to try and stun over, see if they can get in. Info, and a BZ is going to chow 
foul this mid lane. What happens here is he gets up to this mid lane, Capsule thinks that he's hidden behind this cinder block over here, so anyone that might be mid cut couldn't see him. Unfortunately though, his little foot is just sticking out right here, and a BZ can see this, and it's just gonna be a free first blood for phase, and this is just a series of unfortunate events for Boston, because you know, they were down four to two, they make the comeback, they go at five four, you know, they'd lose that two v three in the previous round, and now they get free first blooded because of an angle that they didn't expect that they can be killed from uh, because his foot is sticking out. So pretty unfortunate. You know, this is probably a play they've drawn up and talked about, but unfortunately they're just not expecting uh, Capsule's foot to be, you know, that far out. Usually, you know, if this was played right, he would be behind this entire cover and FaZe wouldn't have info on him. So they would have to play this completely differently. Uh, the rest of his team, obviously, you know, one back over here watching towards this B street. And they have kind of, you know, two guys watching the A cross, making sure that anyone that might've been going towards that A side for a phase uh, is accounted for. And then when they would just retake towards that A side. But this is just super unfortunate for Boston. Abizi just gets the free kill over here. As you can see, you know, the leg is sticking out. He sees that and starts shooting on capsule. Simp from the arches is able to get the kill over here. And then they can instantly start working bomb. They know now that the main defender towards B side is killed, that they can go plant the bomb towards the B side. And, you know, Abizi can just watch for any rotators mid over here. He gets a free kill from Priest to exiting out uh, towards that red side. And now they can just play post plant. You get the bomb down. You can play tower, you can play top three. It's just pretty much wraps for phase. It's just a really, really hard retake for Boston in this situation uh, because everything else is covered for them. They have mid cut, they have B street, they have their full deep plank in case anyone was trying to rotate, you know, from A through useless this way. So they have everything covered 4v2. It's just an easy round for phase and phase is able to go up 2-0 in this series. So we talk about, you know, Boston being in this series, you know, these were two winnable maps. I talked about the hard point in the previous video, but in this situation, destroy, you did have that round 10 that really should have been theirs. Uh, 2v3 situation, they're probably kicking themselves for it. Unfortunately, it was a pretty awkward situation for them, even though it was a 2v3, but you know they're probably expecting to win that round regardless. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for making it to the end of the video, and let me know what you guys think of this new series called Swing Rounds. We're gonna be talking about a bunch of different search rounds. So if you have any suggestions on games or rounds I should do, leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to look at them. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.